The LEGO Fairground sets were never something I particularly liked, but when they become incredible pieces of literal LEGO engineering, with an enjoyable building experience, awesome functions, playability and an impressive final look, I gotta eat my words. The new LEGO Loop roller coaster is all of that and more. I don't really know where to start as there is so much to talk about the model, but I guess I'll address the size first. This thing is humongous. At 92 cm I is one of the tallest LEGO sets to date, just a bit shorter than the Saturn V and the Eiffel Tower. The footprint is around 90 studs by 40 studs, which is slightly shorter than the previous LEGO roller coaster set from a few years ago. So right out of the gate, if you don't have the space to display it at home, it might be a hard sell for you. It also made the build hard, as I needed a lot of desk space to manage the build, loose pieces and the instruction booklet. It's a thick book, by the way, and it came in a paper sleeve with decorations on it, something I've never seen before in a LEGO set. As a side note, I found a building instruction error here, where we are supposed to take pieces away in number 4 that we've placed in step number 3. Like I mentioned before, this set is a work of art when it comes down to the engineering aspect of it. Everything works by turning the single crank on the side. The first stage of the mechanism is bringing the cars to the top of the ride. This whole section gets dragged up when it's caught up in these wider track pieces. You would think that there would be a lot of strain to the mechanism, considering the weight of this whole section, but that effect gets minimized by the counterweight assembly that we see here on the other side. It is connected to the lift mechanism with a Lego string, and it slides up and down on roller coaster straight tracks on their sides. It never leaves this rail mechanism because underneath the build also has the roller coaster car elements. You keep cranking until the lift gets to the top and the cars get loaded into the main roller coaster track, and from there the fun or terror for some minifigures begins. The mechanical prowess of this set doesn't stop there. After the ride, the cars come to a stop at this rubber tire here, and if you stop the crank to watch them go, you'll realize that the lift hasn't come down yet. If you keep cranking, you'll notice the rubber tire turning, as it's also connected to the main crank, and that makes the cars go forward, but coming to a stop on this red assembly here. If you keep cranking, the lift will eventually come down, and when it does, the red assembly kept in place with a rubber band is released by the weight of the lift that now came down to receive the cars once again, and this works flawlessly, every time, and it is simply amazing. Like, can you imagine doing all of this with a single crank? Raising the lift, dropping the counterweight, feeding the cars into the track, making the car stop and then move, and then stop again to then move again and start the loop. There is something mesmerizing about seeing these types of builds working non-stop, especially when there's these many moving parts. Speaking of non-stop, this build can be motorized with powered up components that you can buy separately on lego.com. I used an old power functions battery box and medium motor which was super Super easy to implement and it worked just fine. The track itself makes good use of the roller coaster track elements we've seen being used many times before, though it requires a new element to make the loops, which is slightly different than the sloped ones we know already. They are easy to use for the smaller loops, such as this one, but for the bigger loop, a lot of clever building techniques were used to place some of these track elements at the perfect position and angle. As you can see, these aren't connected like the rest of the system, but the measurements are so precise that the cars go through without any issues. Lots of fun for the 7 civilian minifigures that wanna ride the coaster. The assortment looks great and some of them feature some prints I have never seen before, like the torsos on these 4. 5 of them have alternate faces with some of them being scared, which is perfect to place them on the roller coaster cars. Access to the roller coaster is on this entrance here with a sticker and 2 more for the height requirements of the ride, as well as the forbidden items. The no squirrel sign was kind of fun. The minifigures have to go a short distance in the dark tan area of the floor that leads to the platform. I really like how the roof shape was achieved with a few extra roller coaster track elements. More options if you wish to rebuild the track into a different one. Some stickers for screens show some of the funny photos taken by this camera here. Somebody clearly didn't get the no hot dogs sign and the squirrel doesn't care about squirrel restrictions either. This girl is in charge of the roller coaster, sporting a nice Lego torso and an earpiece on the head and the platform features simple gates for people to get on and off the cars. In the main structure of the set it's worth mentioning the palm tree, some foliage spread out here and there, the brick-built roller coaster name Loop, 
and they lost balloons stuck underneath the roller coaster structure. Speaking of balloons, the park also features the Balloon Guy and his bike with a few regular balloons and two dog balloon elements, which are really cool. For food, people can get some pretzels from the Pretzel Lady and her cart, and there's also the hot dog option from the hot dog stand, which is cleverly made to look like a hot dog. The mustard is incredibly overpriced, I feel, as seen in the prices of this sticker here. Finally, a bench with the mischievous squirrel and a park mat featuring some of the last fairground ride sets Lego has done, I believe. The colors here don't match the color scheme of the haunted house, for instance, but it feels like a direct reference. The haunted house set, by the way, always felt like a tall set, but next to the roller coaster looks silly almost. As I told before, the mechanics on this thing completely blew me away. The final look is impressive considering its size but the design as well, going for a more modern look considering the color scheme and when compared to previous fairground Lego sets. Playability and display value are really high, especially if you motorize the model. Now before giving my thoughts on the building experience, there are also some downsides to the set that I feel are worth mentioning. It is really big, so if you don't have the space to build or display it, that could be something that keeps people from buying it. At $400, it doesn't come cheap as well, and the price per piece ratio isn't great. But there are a lot of specialized elements, so the price tag is understandable, considering also the recent news of LEGO bumping the prices on LEGO sets. There's stickers, which isn't all that bad for me, but still not perfect, and building the chain for the lift was super super boring. I value really highly the building experience of LEGO sets. What's the point of a good looking model if it was a pain to build, right? Going into this build I was scared it could be as boring as the previous roller coaster because that one had dozens of the same pillars and supports done in the same way over and over again. But with this one, considering the nature and the features of the model wasn't boring at all to build. We first built the base and main track section, then the big superstructure that later gets added on, and finally all the major mechanics and detailing. Seeing the loops coming together was amazing considering the crazy angles in this particular section here. Building the dark blue superstructure kept me thinking how big this thing would be in the end, and then seeing the mechanisms coming together and little by little under understanding that everything would work with a simple crank got me excited from start to finish. LEGO intentionally guided the build in a way that you can kinda see how things will go, but only gives you the last pieces to make the whole thing work at the very end of the build, so there was always something to look forward to in this build. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I never really cared much about fairground LEGO sets. But if whatever comes next stays in line with the level of building experience, functions and mechanisms that the LEGO loop roller coaster has, consider myself a fan. The designer and the team behind this did absolutely amazing. Well done guys. Thank you LEGO for sending this set for review and I'll see you all in the next one.